Welcome to our lesson on ecosystems. It's a lesson in synectics. This is a sample lesson based on the synectics model for teaching. Through the synectics approach, scholars can draw connections to the content with metaphors and analogies. This lesson was developed for upper elementary science, specifically fifth grade scholars. Here are our goals and objectives and a few of the materials that your scholars will need in order to successfully complete this lesson. To begin the lesson, we review what exactly an ecosystem is. By definition, ecosystems are environments or habitats of living and non-living things that depend on each other for survival. This is important for your scholars to recall this information because it gives valuable background knowledge in order for them to make the connections with the synexics approach. Take a few seconds to read the quote and study the photo below. What do you think this quote could mean? Basically, it's just saying that life is unpredictable. You can't tell what's going to happen just by looking at something. You can't tell what kind of piece of chocolate is in that box just by looking at it. You've got to try it. You've got to taste it. Life is simply trial and error. Sometimes it takes several tries to get the result you want or need. Now let's apply that same concept to our study of ecosystems. First, let's begin with thinking about some of the characteristics that would describe an ecosystem. Use the pictures on the screen to help you. I see a forest ecosystem here. Here's an ocean ecosystem underwater with a coral reef. Over here, I see a desert turtle in a desert ecosystem. And right below it, we see polar bears and otters in an Arctic e ecosystem. Some ecosystems can be hot and humid. Some are dry, some are rainy and cold. Ecosystems are everywhere in the rainforest, the ocean, the desert, even in mountains. The two most common forms of ecosystems are abiotic, which includes your salt, water, rocks, sediment, and trash, or abiotic, which includes your fish, your plants, your algae, and bacteria. All of these characteristics will be helpful to us as we move through our synectics process. When we think about the quote from the beginning, life is like a box of chocolates, we can use the same concept to create metaphors for the ecosystems. For example, how is an ecosystem like a pepper? Or how is an ecosystem like electricity? How is an ecosystem like a balance? When we make these connections and form these relationships, it helps us to understand the concept. As we further explore using the synectics model to build our understanding of ecosystems, we can create personal analogies. Now this is just a strategy where we become the objects that we're discussing and describing. For example, let's pretend that we are clouds. What are we doing now? Where are we going? How about a rain puddle? If you were a rain puddle, how would you feel when someone steps on you? Now you're a hairbrush. 
what is the first thing you would say to the hare? Let's pretend you're your favorite type of cereal. How would you describe yourself to someone else? Now that we've discussed forming our analogies, we can see how they are similar to the things that we connect them to. Remember those questions from the beginning? How are ecosystems like a pepper? Hmm. If you said that they are both sometimes hot, you're correct. Some ecosystems are hot in temperature, just like some peppers are hot. How are ecosystems like an electrical current? Well, they both have a flow of energy. Food chains and food webs within an ecosystem is a great example of this concept. How is an ecosystem like a balance? Well, all parts of both the ecosystem and the balance must work together in order for them to be even and stable. So these examples of metaphors for ecosystems compare them, the similarities, to the items that we are connecting them to. Now let's take a look at the opposite side. We draw a contrast between the ecosystem and non-examples. If we know what an ecosystem is, we definitely will be able to understand what it isn't. An ecosystem is not like an empty box. Why, you ask? Well, the box is empty and void of any living organisms. And by definition, we know that ecosystems contain living and non-living things. An ecosystem is not like outer space. There aren't any life-giving resources in outer space. Think about that one. Now it's your turn to create your own metaphors for an ecosystem. You will continue to explore using the metaphors and the strategies we've just discussed. You will choose an ecosystem and analyze its characteristics. Using the data, you will create a metaphor and analogy to describe the ecosystem you've chosen. Some examples would be, if you choose a wetland ecosystem, a wetland could be like a zoo because it is a habitat for diverse wildlife. An ocean ecosystem is like a restaurant because it provides food for living things. Now you're getting the picture? We'll try these. Here are three exemplars that show how we can pictorially represent our metaphors. Here we have the wetland metaphor like a sponge because they absorb excess water caused by runoff in the water cycle. Another example is a wetland is like a cradle because it provides shelter and protects the wildlife. You're only limited by your creativity. Use the strategies we've learned in this video to help you create your own metaphors or analogies to help us to understand ecosystems. If you have any other questions, feel free to raise your hand and I'll come to your desk and help you so that we can be successful with this assignment. Good luck and remember, have fun.